Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again. I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about the Big Daddy Archwire, both the upper and the lower. We've had some other stuff on this, but I'm afraid there's some points that we didn't cover uh, fully, and I want to make sure everybody understands uh, how we do this and what are the necessary things to do if you do uh, do it. Now, we make these out of 036 or 040 stainless steel wire. You can make them out of 030, but that's a little bit shaky. It may not be strong, stout enough to really han handle it. Now, we use a young plier on uh, this heavy wire. It's a it's kind of like a tweed loop forming plier, but it is much heavier. We'll have some pictures of it in here and uh, show you it's where you bend uh, circles or whatever is necessary to bend in this uh, big daddy arch wire. Now we didn't start calling it that, but I started using it and, and uh, students and everybody got to calling it the big daddy arch wire. So we just called it Bill White's big daddy arch wire. Uh, and that's the name that uh, stuck with it. Now this is not the first big arch wire to be used in orthodontics. In fact, years ago, uh, I had my teeth straightened in the labiolingual technique, and they used nothing but gold wire, and they had a large arch wire in there, and a solid gold, and uh, well, it was a alloy, I'm sure, but you could solder to it and didn't didn't mess up the tension in the in the wire at all. And it was used to expand arches too. But uh, I brought this back and started using this on top of a regular rectangular arch wire. Now I use an 018 bracket slot. And for the, those of you who may not know what that means, it comes in 022 or 018. I really like the 018 much better. It's a much use a much smaller arch wire to do all the work you need and if there's anything big you need to do the big daddy does that so anyway we'll get back in here uh, showing you this you buy straight stainless steel wire in 14 inch sticks and uh now we take the wire and cut it cut it in two and this is about a seven inch piece here this is either 036 or 040, depending on what you want to use on the particular situation. If it's something pretty hard to expand, we use the 040 or 036, and it's seven inches long, and that gives you plenty of room. So you got a straight piece of the wire, and now we're going to take that wire and bend it around something that is... Uh, about a little, not quite an inch or so across like here. Uh, you can take any kind of a stick or anything. It's round or something that you can bend this wire over. You got to bend it down and kind of pull the ends together down here. And then you turn it loose and it'll form an arch form. And so you put your arch form into that by bending it around uh, something like this torquing turret that uh, we've talked about, and we use this to put different torques in in rectangular wire. This is for for an 018 bracket, or it's that size wire or smaller that you could put torque into on this uh, type of bracket, uh, an 018 bracket. All right. Uh, you just wrap it around there and pull the ends together and something like that. Uh, and it's got some little grooves in it that kind of helps you. And you mash the tail ends of those together out there. Try to have them equal if you can. And you get them really firm up. And the, the ends of it come like this and like this. And now you turn that loose and they'll come out something like that and that'll be your arch form that you use and you can increase or decrease the size of that by what you 
really need if you uh, want to change the the arch form in it now let's see uh, now here we've turned it loose now and this wire assumes a, an arch form that we're going to use now you can increase this very easy or you can squeeze it together and make it uh, make it a little less if you wanted to whatever you feel like is the right arch form for this particular person and how you want to expand their upper arch or their lower arch whichever one you're you're making this this far so we make the arch form in a piece of this 036 or 040 stainless steel wire now I don't know we threw this <laughs> Uh, this is an intruding wire that got into our pictures here, so just forget that one. Uh, we'll get back into the intruding wire. Now, here is the tapadont. We're just making this to show and take pictures of and everything. Uh, so we take this arch form and put it on the tapadont. Now, on all these wires, when you make it, you mark the center point, you see. And then back in here somewhere, you're going to make a little bend so it kind of goes up into the, uh, on the upper ones, we stick the end of this in the an 045 tube back here uh, where your headgears go or other large uh, wires. But I stick these in the headgear tube on the upper. Uh, we'll get around and look at that a little closer later on here now there the wire is and in the mouth we take a wax pattern and you can see the uh, bracket uh, imprint, imprint on this wax and you build them on that you see uh, so but on the top of dog we just pulled it around and made it right there on the top of dog and the wax pattern is a way you could be very accurate build it bend in arch wires and make kind of any loop you want to make off of a wax pattern and put it back in the mouth and that's marvelous you could you can just make all kind of bends in arch wires and loops and whatever you want and you use up the tail end of the wire and uh, have an arch wire that you can fit right back in the mouth uh, off of a wax pattern and that's that's pretty uh, big mouthful. It's hard to to measure all that if you don't have the wax pattern. Now we use that bees wax that we've got a video on it somewhere in here where you order this bees wax to make those wax patterns. Now, now here is a young plier. It's this is not a real plain uh, deal in it, but it's like a tweed forming plier, but these circles are bigger. And it's a heavier. Now the tweed, the loop out here has a kind of a cup in it, and the bar fits down in that. But these, the part out in the front is just straight, straight across. Uh, that's the difference in the young, except that it's much, much heavier plier, and it's got some little grooves back in there. You bend this wire down. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Okay, there's a little closer deal, and this is one side of it, you see, and this fits, and it's open part of the way, and this is the flat portion of it right here. They come together right here, and you can hold that plier. That's a, called a young plier now, and that's what you use on these heavy wires. If you take a tweed former, uh, tweed forming plier, which is a excellent, excellent, a loop forming plier but they're expensive you know and uh, you try to bend this big wire you'll break them or tear them up and so you get to young pliers they're cheaper and uh, they will last much longer uh, okay here we clasp that uh, wire that wire that we made and uh, we're going to put a little bend in that uh, with this young plier and a lot of times on the upper one we'll just make a little dog leg bend 
in it, something like that. And that will go in the headgear tube back here, you see. Uh, it'll show up in just a little bit here. Now these uh, pictures have some writing underneath that. If we use this in some foreign country or something, uh, they can actually interpret or they can uh, figure out what we're saying here a little bit better. Uh, anyway, you're going to make a little uh, bend in that plier. So we grab it with your fingers, you see right here. You're pressing down hard. Now we're going to bend it up. And then we'll go and bend it back in that direction with that young plier. So here we go. And now we clamp it over here. And now we're going to bend over this part of the plier and make a, just a little simple bend in the arch wire itself. And now we've got a little step uh, just made. Or we kind of call that a dog leg sometimes, kind of like this back leg of a dog or something it, but anyway there's a little just a something like that that comes up and then your motor tube is right there you see uh, so that's what we put that bend in both sides of it let me go back here there it is and we grab it on the other side mark it where we're going to bend it and make that simple bend and we end up with two of these dog leg bends or just little uh, rises in the arch wire itself. Now, here both of them are made and you've got a lot of extra wire back out to me end. So this will be cut off back here behind the tube and the tube would usually fit something like that on this uh, wire, you see. Now, okay, here it is on the type of dot, and this uh, uh, bend is pushed into this tube right here, and then you tie these uh, usually three times up here in the front part of the mouth. They don't do anything up here except just keep the wire from going up and down, just hold it in place. And then we'll expand this now out a certain amount. And then you squeeze it together and put it in over here. And then you've got this one will be out here. And you'll bring it over and put it in that area. And the whole thing then will be expanding. It'll be expanding more back here than it does up here. Now, I really recommend that you go ahead and put a bracket or something on this tooth and run this arch wire through here. Now when you get to ready to expand the upper, say this is the upper arch, you look at the tooth. Now these teeth are tilted a little in this way showing that their roots are back that way to some extent. Now we're going to start expanding. Let me erase some of this. We're going to start moving this out now, this arch, this big daddy arch wire is pulling and you tie it to the other arch you see back in here. And it'll pull more back here and less and a little less and then a little less and then almost nothing up here at the front. That just keeps it in place. But it spreads this arch out, something like that. And we widen it. But if you don't watch it in other words if you let me kind of draw what you're going to do uh, to this tooth and that's one thing i wanted to bring across i'm just going to make a little white uh, sheet here now if we're uh, we've got a molar that's sitting in here like this an upper molar coming down you know with a root in here and maybe the buckle roots out here and we're going to expand it out here. That's all right. You could just put it on there and bring it out. It'll bring it. The it'll flatten this the crown out out here, and these roots will be kind of straight up and down. But if the molar starts out and it's flat, and now 
we're going to come in here and and, uh, and expand this motor and we go out in this direction pulling from up here that tooth is going to rotate somewhere around in here and is it this goes out here this goes in that direction now this is in your airway you see that's the vault of your well it's not quite like that but uh, these roots are part of the things that make the width of the airway and you need to increase the airway in most of these cases where we expand in the uh, upper arch so when you expand this going out here you want something expanding this too not having the roots go in when you just pull on this in other words it's just like a wheel out here you pull over here this part goes in as you pull this part out and that's not what you want to do here and that's what i wanted to emphasize and people that just put these on willy-nilly and don't understand what they're doing can actually reduce the airway slightly by expanding the upper arch and that's definitely not what you want to do uh, so we want to show you how to take uh, take for instance if you got a s straight up and down tooth right in here and uh, you got buckle roots and you got a big lingual root in here somewhere that's not a very good one and we're going to pull this out in this direction it's going to rotate somewhere down in there so we have to come in and put progressive root torque in these teeth back here in the back of the mouth so we want the arch wire to have buckle root torque in other words it's got torque on it to push the uh, roots out in this direction so your tube or your bracket going across that molar maybe it uh, looks like this coming down and that's your deal and this is the bracket slot say, and I'm just going to blow it up here now to make this bring the roots of the tooth out like that then you've got to put some bend in that wire in other words you bend it where the wire might be like that back here at this molar and you put progressive where you take the wire and you squeeze it behind the cuspid and then you twist the end of it way around so that as the wire goes back it it's turning this direction you see and it gets back here then this this wire will look like this now we've got to flex it and engage it into this bracket now here are these roots down in here you see now this bracket is trying to twist this in this direction and it will tend to bring the roots out buckly now uh, this gets kind of complicated so the big dad is not as simple as it seems like if you take an arch wire like we use our 018 uh, the biggest wire we usually most of the time use is a 1725 arch wire which is small and you put a bunch of buckle root torque in it it's not going to move the roots out this way the crown will go that way in other words it'll end up being lingual crown torque instead of buckle root torque now i hope this doesn't get people too confused all you got to remember we've got a video on putting this uh progressive torque in the wire in the arch wire in other words you make your arch wire and you grab it right behind the cuspid and hold it real firm and then you twist the end now we take an arch wire and bring a, a bend a leg up like that where you're going to cut it off and now we're going to take that leg and wrap it around like that and we're going to end up with a that wire going back in the back it'll have a a bend in it something like this you see and so we're going to flatten it push it in there and it will tend to bring these roots out or push the crown in well we put the big daddy on there it's not going to bring the crown in at all the roots will come buckle and the crown will come buckle and i don't give a darn how old they are 
I have expanded people in their 80s, expanded and moved their teeth, the bone and all moves out. And I palpate to make sure they got good root structure and the bone structure. And we've brought hundreds and hundreds of expanded older people like that. And the bone structure moves with the teeth and you increase the nasal airway when you do that. So this is a real good thing to do in orthodontics and I hope you'll learn how to do this. It's not not uh, simple. So anyway, this is what's going on here, but it's not as simple as it looks. It doesn't look like, well, we just take this big old wire and put it in there, expand the heck out of it, and now we push it in on one side and the other side goes out and we push it back in and now it's expanding by the way, it'll always expand the same amount on each side. Now, you can't make it expand these and not these unless you put a rubber bands in there and hold them over. You can get a unilateral expansion by using a, a cross bite elastics coming off of one up here. And then here you can hold one side with rubber bands and let the whole thing go the other direction to make a... A unilateral expansion if that's what you have to have but uh, anyway this kind of is what I wanted to cover in this rather than just uh, letting it go on as a big daddy too many people think well this is so simple I'll just stick this on there it works all right if the teeth are leaning in like this you just move them out there that works fine but if the teeth are straight or if they're buckly inclined and you're going to expand them even more, that's worse. So you have to put a lot of this buckle root torque. And then if you leave the archway in there without the big daddy, the crown will go into cross bite lingually. Uh, the arch, the torque in the wire will overpower the lateral expansion of that wire. So just remember uh, that. Uh, okay, I don't want to scare you off of this stuff because it's really uh, good to use. Now here is the wire we bent and uh, that's, I put it on a piece of paper just so we can illustrate. In other words, we marked where it is here and now we're going to take and activate the wire. In other words, we're going to bend it, straighten it out some, you see. And you can put varying amounts of expansion into the wire but if you're just starting out with this just be kind of gentle with it to start with because if you stick this on some uh, screwball it's not going to come back in the office and he runs off like i've had people go for six months and come back in well uh, bless you you the teeth will be out here when that guy comes back in six months i mean you you want to see these people right soon after you put this on. If it's the first ones you've done, I'd see them in a couple of weeks, you know, and just be pretty gentle with how much you put on to start with. Now, if they don't move, you can increase it. There's no big problem on that. And if that doesn't work, if you don't, if you straighten that and you can't get enough power, you can Pull it out here and heat treat the wire. It'll get a golden color and then it'll be a stronger. It'll be harder to compress it uh, then. All right. There it is. Now we've straightened the wire out. That's about a, a three-eighths of an inch on each side here. We'll plug one side in. The other side will be out here and then plug it in over here. Now some bright gals think that it's going to do all the expansion over here, but it does the same amount on both sides of the mouth when you put that in. Uh, okay. Now, there it is on one side, you see, and this side went out here. So we have to kind of slide that out a little bit and then press this together with your fingers and push it into this part, and then the thing's going to be pushing the same amount on both sides, then you tie it out here to just keep it from going up and down. And then you've got to tie it to various teeth in here, especially where you want them to expand. 
you tie it to certain teeth that you want to expand them out more. Uh, okay, there it is in. Now, so I'm going to draw a little diagram here showing you about where the amount of force is. And we tie this up, and you just tie it to these to your arch wire out here about three places and that keeps the wire from going up and down this way and I tie them and tuck them in so these ties don't stick the person in the lips uh, don't try putting a little elastic over this thing because it may pop it off and the thing come off while they're gone I, so I tie them in with the arch with a, a soft stainless steel wire you know okay now here it is tied in you can see i've got a tie here and one here and it looks like that's all i've got just two ties it's not doing much at all out here to, it's not bothering these teeth it's just kind of setting there and it's keeping it from going up and down out here now where it's doing its most back here and then it tapers down as it comes up to the front. Or you can put all the force over here and take some of it off over here. You, you can regulate this and move one side more than the other by how you tie. Or you can make one tooth be taking more of the load than the other teeth if you want to put more pressure on one side than the other. Uh, do that. All right, there. Now, this is the lower one. I thought I had the little indication, but your your expansion pressure is greater here, and about here, and up here. Very little, and it's almost nothing up in this part. See, as you get on back here, it'll be much more here. I recommend that you bracket or run a a piece of arch wire down on your second molar there and bring it out with them uh, so you really want it out if you're going to torque it you really need a bracket in there and put this torque all the way back to the second molar when you go in to do this all right now the lower one is a little different uh, deal uh, we take this arch wire and make it to fit you see and mark the center of it and mark the little dog leg bends now this right here you're going to bend a circle up here but you can't bend it together good so you put it in between the plier and crimp it and it'll push it down like that and uh, you'll bend the lower one like that now on our stuff i always put lingual button so if we wear elastics crossbite or class 2 elastics from the inside and then we have the buttons already on them so anyway this is the lower big daddy and you see you've got a regular arch wire and you definitely have the lower motors banded and you tie between the two motors back here and then you may tie it to something else up here to make sure everything back here at the back is expanded at the same time and then if you've got torque in it and you need to torque it you don't want to do this on a round wire you put a rectangular wire in here and put this buckle root torque on these teeth and you bring them out frequently your lower teeth your lower molars are expanded more than your uppers and you don't have to expand them because of mouth breathing uh, we know that chronic mouth breathers their tongue stays down here in the bottom arch and their lower teeth and i'm one of them my lower teeth extend out a little past my upper teeth and i'm always chewing my cheeks you see because of it and uh, it's caused just because of uh, mouth breathers you can't breathe through your mouth and breathe under your tongue you breathe on top of it and your tongue sits down in here consequently pushes out on these teeth where the uppers don't get that pressure and you have these uh, little narrow uh, palates 
and then they'll jump from one side to the other and then you get these asymmetries in your face it all originated back in mouth breathing when you were an infant that's when it started so uh, anyway we'll show that I've got a video on that itself uh, now here in the front we just tie this thing on and let it kind of ride under the brackets right out here see it just sits under the brackets but it's expanding like everything back here in the back of the mouth and all the way up to about here or something but very little expansion anything in the anterior part of the mouth and it'll work on anybody I have never seen anybody come in the office that I could expand their arches unless you palpate it and you can just touch the roots of these their buckled teeth in here and they had no tissue no bone structure over their roots it's because then you leave those alone but if they've got a bony ridge and you can tell the teeth are in the bone good you can expand their arches and I've done it up that started them I've never started anybody that was 90 years old uh, but I have worked on people in their late 80s and be working on when they got 90 or something like that but not too many of those so anyway this is just the upper the big dad and 04036 is what we normally use in that uh, situation uh, now most of the time up above we'll put some kind of something like that or we just never go in and expand it without something going on back in here or else go ahead and put a bracket on this tooth and run the arch wire back to it this is a good little bracket right here with these wings you can rotate real good with a, a Lang and Lewis brackets but they have a nice inner bracket space you see you can put a good bit of bend in this arch wire in that area and these little wings help you locate the teeth so I liked those brackets uh, the one we use most of the time is just a little tiny bracket because we've learned how to rotate with wedges and things but if you're not used to them this be a little hard to rotate some of the teeth oh here here is the arch where I'm showing the pressure is more here less here and just a very little bit up here see and this is zero it's not expanding there but that's the way it's going and then we put this to make sure this goes out but you don't get the torque in it uh, usually if you torque all of these this will torque to some extent but it's better to put a bracket on there and run this arch wire through there so that you get the buckle root torque in the second motor going to the back all right this 036 and a 040 big daddy lower arch there it is tying the lower one in you see uh, <clears throat> now in case like this rather than have just a little bracket stuck on there we're going to put a lot of pressure on this we would band both motors but you don't have to and you can tie this in now this is a soft stainless steel wire i would use probably a an 014 wire in the 14 thousandths rather than the normal thing we use here like tying a bracket to the an arch wire to the bracket use a, a ten thousandths uh just a ten thousandths so uh this one is four thousandths and, and this would be a ten and that's fourteen thousandths and uh, we use also an 012 or twelve thousandths wire so those three sizes are all the soft stainless steel wire that we use and now there it is we're going to tie that up there and then tuck this tie in so it won't come out now this is holding on it's it's bringing and you want an arch wire in here strong enough to where as you pull these teeth out if you put this on real 
flimsy, flexible little wire. It'll just pull the wire out of the bracket, you see. So you have to have a fair, strong, fairly strong wire. Now, if you're gonna <coughs> if you're gonna put torque in them, you've got to put a rectangular wire in here. So just remember that. Now that's lined up like that. The upper and lower ones same way, and there. It's just an arch form bent, and there we're putting these bends in the wire again, kind of showing you a second time just how you do them, where you're going to cut them off and stuff like that. And now I haven't shown you this, how we make the little uh, circle in this wire. This is heavy stuff, see, and you bend it around that, and you're going to come out with a little circle about like that and you pull this thing down and now when you get about here you just can't already get this together we have got a groove back in here in that plier and we're going to open that plier up and well this was we just bent it down there and then you cut it off and then you got to mash it together in one place i showed people how to crimp it uh, all right, we cut it off, and now we're going to take that and flatten it out. Well, I just cut it off, you see. Now we put it between these grooves. So this is the same plier, and these are grooves back here at the back. And you put the bottom wire in a groove, the top wire in a groove, it won't slip out. And now you mash that together, and you're going to bring this part right down to that. And then that's what you tie this thing on with now you mash it together and you can do that with that plier now you come out like that completed circle for the mandibular big daddy arch wire now i know people have used big wires through the years but uh, i don't know anybody that came out and started using this and sticking it on top of the regular conventional arch wires back when we started doing this so uh, i just call this the bill white big daddy arch wire and uh, uh, actually students started calling it big daddy i didn't say that but uh, anyway there it is and there's a, another there it is expanded and then we'll come put that arch tied in on one side bring it around to the other side tie it in and uh, this is all we've got on Big Daddy Arch wires, and I hope you learn how to use them. But don't think that all you do is just put the big wire in there. You've got to put uh, progressive torque in the rectangular wire, especially if the teeth are straight up and down or if they're tilted to the outside. You really have to put it in now. If they're tilted inside, you can upright the teeth. But when they get upright, you got to put the torque in there if you're going to expand them even further. So I'm going to hush, and that's going to be the end of this Big Daddy deal. But this is a very, very useful uh, tool. I have expanded, I can't tell you how many people, and I've never pulled the teeth out of the bone structure, uh, regardless of what they say. You'll have a ridge in there, but you can expand teeth all over the place on almost any age. So I'll hush here, and we'll finish this up. Thank you very much for looking, and we'll call it stop.